Okay, so we should be able to share the screen. Um, welcome everyone. Welcome everyone to the first of the many, many, many sessions of the Educational Blitz. Um, you know, hosted and um, and and really um, spearheaded by U.S. Assembly Sarthi, and it's a really, really good opportunity to sort of. Um, I guess mainstream education and to have everybody um, who's doing rotations or who's planning to do future rotations really see what level on what level you're expected and you, you know you really want to understand medicine on um, in order to um, just perform well on rotations and get ready for residency. Um, so these are some of the topics that, you know, whenever we lecture for the residents, we talk about whenever we have students with us in the office, students with us in the hospital, we make sure that they understand on the topic. OK, so we're going to start off with UTI pyelonephritis. What exactly is expected on and on what level are we expected? Um, so I like doing the way I, we're going to do this is it's a question answer. We're going to pull up a, a real live, you know, medicine board question, medicine in service exam question, and then we're going to slowly lead us into the topic and discussion on it. Um, so the way I like to do it is if we have a brave volunteer, walk us through this. Um, if not, I will go through the question myself. Anybody want to take it away? So guys, if you want to uh, put in the chat, anyone? Or if you want to talk, I can promote you as a as a oh, panel. So you know what? It's actually better like this. Let me read out the question. This is what we're going to be doing, guys. Let me read the question out. And then everybody on the WhatsApp chat, everybody on the um, Zoom, just put in what you think the answer is, A, B, C, or D. Just type it onto the group, and I'll be looking through the um, the chat, okay? So I'll read it out. 60-year-old female um, undergoes a, a pre-op evaluation for hip replacement, okay? She has diabetes. She has a liver transplant a couple of years ago. Um um, and she's on tacolomus, mycophenolate, and her urinalysis shows uh, infection, leukocytes, and bacteria. What is the next step in management? Oral cipro, oral amoxicillin. You just monitor her or oral nitrofurantoin. Um, what do we think? Everybody on the chat, everybody here can just um, type there under the chat what they think is going on. Athri, you're saying... D, what, what, just, I guess, just feel free. Everybody should just maybe take a few seconds and just quickly pick a number. We're seeing a lot of D's, a lot of D's, a lot of D's. Okay. Um, good. So I'm so happy we, we're talking about this point. This is so high yield. This is incredibly high yield. Um, and it comes up all the time in, in real life and on the exams. And they love this because now they're giving you a patient. What's the topic guys? What's this? What's the topic? What's this topic? This is asymptomatic bacteria. This is somebody who has no symptoms, a peri valve for hip, and she's found to have a UTI. So the guidelines are very clear when you treat or when you do not treat patients for asymptomatic bacteria. And the answer in this case is you monitor. Okay. So patients who have asymptomatic bacteria um, 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 before a hip replacement do not need antibiotic therapy if they're asymptomatic and the answer is to monitor and they love to test this. Let's have one follow-up question on the topic and then I'm going to go through a lot of teaching on the topic. One follow-up question is this question. 25-year-old woman comes in for a routine urine analysis at 23 weeks pregnant in the clinic. She has no symptoms. Medical history is non-significant. Urine analysis shows bacteria with Luke count. What is the next step? A- Cipro, B, Doxy, C, Monitor, D, Nitrofurantoin. What are we thinking now, guys? Now we're thinking a lot of, okay, so now we're thinking don't monitor her, treat her, but we're not sure what antibiotic to treat her. Some people are saying it's ciprofloxacin. Some people are thinking nitrofurantoin. Okay, excellent. So this is very good. Um, and I'm, it's so nice when I see old students of ours. Arthi, shout out to you. You know, not old, but you know, with me in the past and some new ones. So it's also nice to see you guys as well. So some people are saying nitrofurantoin. Okay, so let's go through it very carefully. So this is such a good question, such a good learning question, right? So what we have to understand, guys, is um, is the guidelines, right? So screening for and treating asymptomatic bacteria is only recommended in pregnancy and before invasive urologic procedure. So in this question, there's no invasive urologic procedure. So you do not need and she was not pregnant, obviously. So it just monitor. Good, we're there. Good there. In this question, she's pregnant. So the guidelines say for pregnancy, you need to treat asymptomatic bacteria. The question is what antibiotics? And this is where students and residents get stuck. Somebody who's pregnant can never take Cipro. It's contraindicated. It's a floxacin, right? So that's how they trick you. So usually Cipro is a good answer. It's not an answer. Doxycycline, contraindicated in pregnancy. It's a tetracycline. It's a cycline. Contradicated. So the answer would be PO, oral nitrofurantoin. Excellent. You see how the exam, what they like to do to you guys. Very good. So um, um, 
this is just going over it. So um, generally, ACE bacteria, you only treat in pregnancy and those undergoing a urologic procedure, not a hip replacement, any only a urologic procedure. Okay. In pregnancy, you have to be very careful. Sep, Rocephin, Augmentin, Amox are safe. Bactrim, Doxy, Nitro in the first semester, you always avoid, always avoid ciprofloxacin. Good. Um, one more thing I would like to add in patients who are very high risk for C. diff, always avoid Cipro. High risk for C. diff, avoid Ciprofloxacin um, because um, it's high, you know, that's a way they can test you also. Give you a patient who has a history of C. diff, you always want to avoid Cipro as a UTI management for these patients. Good. So this is how the exam likes to think. Okay. Um, let's move on to prophylaxis for urinary tract infections. Um, and I'll take it right here. Young female comes in recurrent UTIs twice a year next step in the clinic. So now she feels great. She's, you know, does not have symptoms, but she comes in saying, hey, doc, I've had a UTIs two times a year. Anything I can do to help me prevent from infections? What do we offer her, guys? What do we offer her? A, ciprofloxacin. B, monitor her. Tell her there's nothing indicated. C, nitrofurantoin. D, oral amoxicillin. Nitro. Night, uh, we're saying Cipro. Okay, this is what, yeah, Cipro and Nitro, we're between A and C. So that's exactly what 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 the exam wants you to do is, okay, so definitely you need to pre-treat, prophylact for recurrent UTIs, right? So what do you want to do? It's either Cipro or Nitro, and I'll take you right through the guidelines, okay? And the guidelines um, differ on this. So the answer is, if they have three or more within 12 months, it's Cipro. If it's two, Nitro. So if it's more than three, that's when you have to do Cipro prophylaxis. Otherwise, it's nitro. So in this case, because you only had about twice a year, answer is nitro for Antoine. You see how the exam is very nitpicky, very tricky. But if you know the guidelines, you'll get the question right. Twice a year, nitro. Three times a year, you have to prophylax with Cipro. Usually about six months to 12 months, then you can reevaluate. Okay. Let's take into a, a question that the exam likes of inpatient hospital medicine. You see this all the time when we round in the hospital. 40-year-old woman comes in with pyelonephritis. Okay, febrile, blood pressure is okay. She's feeling tenderness. Urine culture grows ESBL positive, sensitive to cefepime. Blood culture negative. What is the next step? Okay, so ESBL UTI, pyelonephritis, sensitive to cefepime. A, switch to cefepime. Right, right now she's on rocephine. So A, switch to cefepime. B, switch to ertapenem in advance. C, switch to oral augmentin. D, meropenem. Mar meropenem. What do we think about this? And this topic is, I guess... Um, ESBL UTI or ESBL pyelonephritis, what to do with medical management. Very common on exam, step two, step three, in service exam and on the medicine uh, boards and clinically, clinically. What do we think, guys? So we're thinking meropenem, meropenem. Some people say cefepime. This is exactly where the exam wants you to think. It's a lot of people are saying cefepime. So guys, this is very, very good learning point. I'm happy we're going to do this right now. So what the exam wants you to do, guys, is it's sensitive to cefepime. So it's it's everyone's going to pick, it's cefepime. Switch to cefepime. Guys, they're tricking you. If they ever say it's sensitive to something, they're tricking you. It's never sensitive. ESBL never is sensitive to cefepime. It's a contaminant. So it's always a trick. Good. How do you treat cefepime? So you need a carbapenem. So there's two carbapenems. There's ertapenem and meropenem, two. So how do you know if it's B or D? How do you know if it's Invans or meropenem? How do you know? So the answer is ESBL. It's always, it's sensitive to both, but you pick the lower of the two guns. Invans is ESBL management. If it was pseudomonas, then you need meropenem. So the answer is it's going to be a carbapenem, but ESBL is, it's both of them will kill it. Meropenem and Invans, but Invans is a smaller weapon. So you don't use your biggest weapon in ESBL. You save it for pseudomonas when you're going to need meropenem. So the answer is B, Invans, ertapenem an exam favorite, absolute favorite. Good. Next. So we spoke to ESPL UTI. Do not give cefepime, even if the lab shows it's acceptable. It's their favorite trick. Um, um, and the way you're going to, the way you're going to do is um, you're going to, or dependent in advance is the first line. Okay. Um, this is another question. It's a young girl um, comes to the office for frequency dysuria. She was treated with back from about five days ago. On physical exam, she has some, Right side is CV tenderness, urine analysis positive. What is your next step? P A, nitro. B, send her to the ER for IV antibiotics. C, oral augmentin. D, oral Cipro. What are we thinking, guys? People are saying B, everyone wants to send her to the ER. 
Some people are saying D oral separate. Okay, so I see exactly where we, we are. Very good. I'm happy we have these two narrowed it down to these two. Okay, so this is pyelonephritis. I think we all know the diagnosis is pyelonephritis, UTI that spread to the kidney. Now, there are very specific criteria for when patients can be treated in the office on oral Cipro, which is good, or need to go to the hospital. So what are the criteria? Any, um, so I'll tell you right now, the criteria are four. A, if she's older than 65, which she's not, then she needs to go to the hospital. B, a lot of medical comorbidities, which she's not. C, is she cannot um, tolerate oral or she's septic, right? And last one is if she failed oral outpatient antibiotics. And here, she was treated for Bactrim five days ago. She did not get better. So now you have to send her to ER for IV antibiotics. That is correct. It's B, acute pyelonephritis sent to the ER if they failed outpatient antibiotics. Other criteria we spoke about, sepsis, old age, um, or or if they have medical, two or more medical comorbidities. So that's very, very important to know which patients who have pylo could you treat in the office with oral antibiotics or who do you need to send to the hospital for IV antibiotics? Very, very important topic. And I'm happy we covered it. One more question on, um, one more question on pyelonephritis, and then we'll wrap up talking about pyelonephritis. 30-year-old woman evaluated in the ED for three days of urinary frequency, right flank pain and fever. She was treated with Bactrim two weeks ago. Medical history of kidney stones, she has a rash with amoxicillin, childhood rash with amoxicillin. Physical exam shows tenderness. The UAB is positive. She has renal calculi on ultrasound. What is the next step? A, do not need antibiotics. B, oral Cipro. C, IV rocephin, D, IV vancomycin. Okay, so again, this is somebody who comes in um, with pylo, right? She has pyelonephritis. She has the flank pain on CVA, tenderness. Urine analysis is positive. Two weeks ago, she was treated with Bactrim. Here she is in the ER. Um, and do you want to know what is the next step? What are we thinking here in the chat, guys? Um, so I'm about have you saying oral cipro and oral cipro athlete. So a lot of us are saying oral cipro flaxin um, to send out on um, oral cipro. This is somebody who um, who did not fail, did not fail antibiotics. This is an old infection, right? And now she has UT, and now she has pylo. So the answer would be outpatient cipro. Very good. Very good. Okay. So let's wrap up by telling pylo. So patients are going to come with flank pain, fever, leukocytosis. Now, they, they, a lot of times they present after failing oral antibiotic for a simple UTI. Okay. CAT scan or physical exam is going to show, is going to make your diagnosis. So how do you diagnose it, right? So you don't always need a CAT scan showing perinephritic stranding. Physical exam, see the attendance. That's enough. Flank pain, that's enough. Okay. Watch out for complications. A lot of times these patients present with perinephritic abscess. So always watch out for that. If that's ever the case, you need to drain it. For continuous drainage is the answer. Okay. Outpatient pyelonephritis is ciprofloxacin. Um, very good. Okay, guys. Um, that is UTI. That's pyelonephritis. The key thing to watch out for is a complication of pylo, like perinephritic abscess prevents, pr presents a lot of times with percutaneous drainage is the right answer. Always look out for indications for hospital admission. If they don't warrant indication, again, or indications for hospital admission is age over 65, two or more medical comorbidities, um, failed outpatient oral antibiotic therapy, or septic, which means hypotensive, tachycardic. If they don't have that, Outpatient ciprofloxacin, and that's the right answer for this question. So very good. Just a short recap, guys, for today's weekly Sarthi Blitz. Um, they, we talked about asymptomatic bacteria. When do you need to treat patients who have asymptomatic bacteria? That's only in pregnancy, only before urologic procedure, okay? What, UT, what medications are safe in pregnancy? Uh, always avoid cipro. And the, uh, a cep cep you know, cephalosporin, amox are always going to be good ones. These are going to be good, but not in the first trimester, right? We spoke about um, when to prophylax for UTI. That's going to be Cipro if they have three or more, Nitro if they have two or more. Very good. We also spoke about how to treat ESBL UTI. ESBL UTI needs to be treated with Invans or Tepenem. Last but not least, we spoke about very important criteria is when do you take a patient from the office and send them to the hospital for IV antibiotics? Again, age 65, two or more comorbidities, failed out outpatient therapy, which was our case over here. Um, um, otherwise, IV rocephin is the right answer. Very good. Thank you so much for joining us. Any closing remarks, um, Pawan? Yeah, so thank you, Dr. Weissman. And for those of you who are interested in knowing more, in fact, Dr. Weissman runs uh, our research and rotation. So, uh, you know, if you'd like to rotate with him and also do research, RT from our team, 
can send can send you all the details. In fact, uh, uh, you know, so consider that. And if there are any other questions, uh, we'll be happy to answer. Uh, we do hope to do these sessions weekly, bi-weekly from an educational perspective. So if there are any questions, we can take that. And Aarti, meanwhile, if you can uh, just post a link to the research and uh, you know some of the rotations of Dr. Weissman, that'll be great. Uh, meanwhile, any questions? So guys, the way we do this is it prepares you. So this is sort of the threshold where, you know, clinically um, what will be expected on a resident level, right? It's going to be a little bit advanced maybe for some students, but it's an excellent way to gauge yourself and say, how am I doing to prepare for residency? This is what's expected as an intern um, to master this, at least by, by the second year of residency. And also for the exams, it's very high yield material. We'll be doing different topics every week, um, short um, spurts. And what I recommend is every week, just read up on the topic previously and you will master a lot, a lot of medicine. Okay, guys? All right. Thank you very much. And uh, goodbye, everyone. Uh, e email Arti if you have any questions, and then we'll go from there. Thank you, Dr. Weissman. Yep. A pleasure. Nice to see you guys. Thanks for joining, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.